we could continue describing interference and other phenomena with our every path method and spinning arrows, but suffice to say, the method works. Always works. Exactly works. So let's turn our attention to the interaction of light and electrons. We can apply the every path method here as well. We start by drawing diagrams of every possible path for an interaction to occur. And surprisingly, we can reduce the task of making these diagrams to just three fundamental actions that we need to consider. Every possible interaction diagram can be reduced to combinations of these three. One, a photon goes from place to place. Two, an electron goes from place to place. Three, an electron emits or absorbs a photon. Each of these basic actions has an amplitude, an arrow, that can be calculated according to certain rules. Let's draw a diagram of one action. A photon goes from place to place. We put time on the vertical axis and space on the horizontal axis, and we will represent the photon by a wiggly line. So basic action one looks like this. There is a certain probability amplitude for the photon to go from A to B. Let's call it P, A to B. And there is a formula for the size of the corresponding arrow. In the second basic action, an electron goes from point A to point B. Let's call the amplitude for this action E, A to B. Notice electrons are represented as straight lines. The formula for the amplitude of this action includes a very special number called n. And it's interesting to note that the formula for p, a to b, a photon going from point a to point b, is the same as e, a to b, an electron going from point a to point b, if n is set to zero. The third basic action is an electron emits or absorbs a photon. This action is called a coupling. Every coupling is a junction between two straight lines and a wavy line. There is no complicated formula for the amplitude of coupling. It is just a number, and we call it j. Its value is about negative 0.1. Now let's calculate the probability that two electrons at two points, one and two, end up at points three and four. This event could happen in two ways. The electron at point one could go to three, given an amplitude of E one to three. And the electron at two goes to four, giving E two to four. So the overall amplitude for this path is E one to three times E two to four. Another way would have electron one go to four and electron two go to three. This would have an amplitude of E one to four times E two to three. And of course, the final step is to add these two arrows to get the total amplitude. This would be a good first approximation, but we should also consider other ways this event could happen. For each of the ways we just described, one electron could emit a photon on the way, and the other electron could absorb a photon along the way. Calculating this complicated amplitude involves the number j we mentioned earlier. It is shown here. And there are more possibilities. This looks hopeless, but the number j will come to our rescue. The first ways this event could happen have no j's in the calculation. The next way had j times j. And the last would have j times j times j times j. And since j times j is less than 0 
the arrow from this possibility is only 1% as long as the arrow for the first way. And the j times j times j times j path is less than 1 ten thousandth as long as the no j method. So you only have to go to the more complicated possibilities if you need increased accuracy. When an electron is placed in an external magnetic field, it exhibits a response called its magnetic moment. The diagram for the first approximation of the magnetic moment of an electron is very simple. An electron goes from place to place and couples with a photon from a magnet. This gives a value of 1 for the magnetic moment. After some years, it was discovered that the value was not exactly 1, but something like 1.00116. In 1948, the first second order corrections were made. They involved J times J terms from diagrams like this. To calculate the contributions from this class of diagrams, we had to make an arrow for every place in space-time that the photon could be admitted in every place that it could be absorbed. And since then, experiments have measured the magnetic moment to even greater accuracy. So now we needed to consider all the ways the electron can go from place to place with four extra couplings. It took two groups of physicists two years to calculate these terms. The term with six extra j's involves even more possible ways the event could happen. It took 20 more years to get this extra accuracy figured into the theoretical value of the magnetic moment. With better computers, more and more J's have been added. And theory and experiment now agree in more than 16 decimal places. If this accuracy was matched in measuring the distance from the Earth to the Moon, we would know the lunar distance to an accuracy smaller than the thickness of a single human hair. Quantum electrodynamics is perhaps the single most successful physical theory ever devised. It forms the bedrock foundations for all of today's unification theories, like the standard model. QED, quote, erat demonstrandum, 